This is uh, March 9th, 2016, and we are here in Las Vegas. This is DeLorean Mac Mini podcast number eight. We are awaiting the arrival of the DeLorean World Tour. Three guys from Germany are driving their DeLoreans around the world and ferrying them across the bodies of water and will end up at Eurofest 2016. They have unique DeLoreans that they've hardened for this trip and we're going to be interviewing them and inspecting their cars and it's going to be a great day for DeLorean tech people. DeLorean World Tour was a team of four DeLorean owners from Germany who in 2013 decided that they would take their DeLoreans around the world. In order to do this, they had to develop a ruggedized DeLorean that could handle the roads in less developed countries. After three years of developing, engineering, and testing, they were ready to go. Three of the DeLorean owners set off on the Around the World Tour while one stayed back in Germany and provided ground support. The tour would take them through 26 countries. The first leg of their journey started in Austria. Then they made their way through the Balkans and the Middle East, ending up all the way in India and Nepal. Finally, they moved down to Singapore. It took them over four months to cover all of these miles. From Singapore, they ferried their cars over to Australia. In Australia, they drove the long highway that divides the country. And then from Australia, they had their cars ferried to British Columbia. In September, they flew to British Columbia and began their tour of North America. Along their way through the North American continent, they ended up in our backyard, Las Vegas. <laughs> On their first evening in Las Vegas, they met with the DeLorean Club and took in some of the sights of the city. The next day was a tech day at our house where we all talked about cars and engineering. We demoed the full-size power windows design and let them take a spin in the electric DeLorean. They also let me drive one of their cars with the electric power steering. then got into the nuts and bolts of their cars. The idea, idea with the Duran World Tour grew up 2010. And well, in 2011, I start with a prototype car, put in some things and um, make some modifications. And in 2012, we search for cars and buy the cars. Yeah, there were chunky lorries. Well, um, the idea was we don't want to take um, nice beautiful classic cars for a trip around the world because yeah. I think at the end of the trip the cars are really down and so I think this is not okay to take a very nice beautiful classic car. The first thinking was we all go with our own DeLoreans, yeah? Yeah. we modify our own DeLoreans and make this trip but the own DeLoreans are manual and they are really beautiful. Yeah? Uh, Andre, Klaus, the new, they have very very beautiful nice original DeLoreans. So um, I think it's, it's not correct to make a trip around the world with these cars and make all these modifications and cut holes in the fender and so on, you know. Well, and so we think, let's look for really, really bad cars. And so we find these cars and this, they, these cars were so terrible, nobody will buy these cars and will bring them back on the road. Uh, because right. they are absolute down, frame, engine, transmissions, interior, everything, yeah. Um, well, but we take these cars and um, make everything 
brand new, you know, and we put in all these modified parts in the cars and we make the interior brand new because everything is different. So um, the, the, the dashboard is different, um, uh, everything is different, the seats are different, yeah, the center console, everything is different. So we put all these different parts in the car and they okay, we gave the cars a second life. And I think this is the better way to take cars from rubbish, bring right. them back on the road and give them a second life and make some guys happy with them, than destroy a wonderful classic car. I think this is not the correct way. Well, and from this cars now, as you'll see here, now are four on the world. We're Three all... are here and the fourth um, is getting finished now at the moment in okay. Germany, in my okay. workshop, and um, to the Eurofest, the end of May. Right. But if everything works perfect, Sven, the fourth guy from our, uh, from our team, I told right. you right. yesterday about him, he's the guy, he make all these preparations and all this visa yes. stuff and all the shipping stuff and so on, yeah? And this guy will drive the, the car number four to Belfast, if everything works perfect. So in Belfast, I hope we are all four together with four cars. We are together, but we hope we're hopeful that we are together with four of these cars. And it looks the same. You see a lot of different modifications here. This is a Lambda monitor, but let's start with this part. We call this the Himalaya switch. Um, on this unit, we can adjust um, fuel pressure. When you go higher on the mountains, the original fuel pressure regulator mm -hmm. only works until three, three and a half thousand meters correctly. So you can go into the back and um, make something that the screws. We prefer to do this inside of the car, so you don't have to open the back. Right. Yeah. So we can switch here. This is the Himalaya switch. We can switch this from automatic to manual, and then we adjust the fuel pressure here from the driver's seat. And wow. here we see when you go higher, yes. are we rich, are we lean, are we okay? That's wow. all. That's the reason why we have yes. this, this monitor here. Yeah? Yes. Well, and here in this hole you see the navigation system. Klaus program, programmed this every, well, about a week or two weeks and though every day targets are here inside. Yes. So in the morning we only start the cars and Klaus makes the leader, he drives always in front. He's the man in the front. He programmed all this and so we all have the same information. Every day we find our we find our our, our target, uh, our finish point perfectly. Right side. This is a normal watch, a normal clock. Sorry. Yeah. Fuel gauge for the auxiliary fuel tank. Yeah. Here we have a, um, a spare speedometer. It calls the, the kilometers an hour and the and the, the, the complete trip we made and so on and so on and so on. Yeah. This is not monitored by GPS. This is monitored by a sensor because when we go through tunnels or through woods, you have a bad signal from GPS. Right. This is still working. This is working in a tunnel too. GPS is not working so, in so a tunnel. what's the signal input for um, We make the signal um, we, with, a read, with a read switch, right. with a read switch and magnets. And we put these magnets into the, the output shaft from the transmission, yeah? There we put these magnets inside and we put the read conduct. Over it, yeah, that's yeah. it, and that's the signal, and that signal works always. This is a, a, a main switch, and this main switch switches off everything. Okay. Everything means um, not only it, it don't uh, only cuts the battery um, uh, from the rest of the car. Um, this is a three-way switch. First is the battery; it's right. the main right. thing. The second is um, the fuel pump disconnected, and on the ignition system you have earth. It's, it's from the racing. So when you switch this off, everything gets off. Here inside are a lot of cables and relays and mm -hmm. fuses and so on. And here down you see some switches. And these switches are for the CB radio. Okay. CB radio. Uh, for amplifier CB radio, you can switch on here. The ignition without... This is the, 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 the radio switch, of course, sure. in, in older cars. And you can switch on and off your head-up display. This works by GPS, though it's, it's very easy, yeah. so you always have the perfect information. And then one switch for the fuel system, because we, we don't only have two tanks, we have two complete different systems. We have a rear view mirror, but in this rear view mirror, there is a, a screen integrated here. Yeah. So here we have a, um, a cruise control. All three cars use automatic transmission, and here we have a switch 
for the electric antenna and here is a switch for seat heating. So we have different connectors here for power, mm -hmm. for cell phone, for anything else. You can load your camera, uh, recharge cameras and so on. Well, here we have a 220 volt connection. If you have to, um, to recharge a notebook or something, if 220 volts, this is the normal um, uh, voltage, voltage in, in, in Germany, yeah. This orange one, this is the GPS tracker. Yeah, okay. This GPS tracker sends um, then the signal to the satellites and yeah. you can watch the signal on your computer at home. Yes, I you did. You did this? Yeah, yes, okay, yeah. So we, you can follow the whole tour, yeah. It's right. very funny for our family because they always know his wife knows always where he is. Yeah. Klaus, where are you? Why are you no, so where long? My, where my car is. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So these are our custom seat covers you had made. Yes. So does, does um, DeLorean in Germany sell these to people? Or no. these are just for your cars? Well, I am DeLorean Germany. Right. And I don't sell these vehicles. So you had them, okay, so you had these custom made for your yes, four vehicles? For our four vehicles, yeah. Okay, and this, what kind of fabric is this? Um, the, um, I don't know the brand from this one, but they use this for Audi parts of the uh, R8 seats. A 90 model, 90, uh, 2012 until uh, 14. Yeah, they use this skin, this right. material for, for Audi R8. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so this, this is, is item material. This, this is an Audi seat material. We bring the battery or not? Yeah. Oh, that boy, that is sticky. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Because I always had a problem with the leather seats to sit in, and if you go oh, along this, this distance, makes it I into a. Yeah, a much well, and nicer cruiser. Oh works. my goodness. Huh? And with the heads up the heads up display works nice. First, an engineer from Opel. You know Opel, this is the uh, yeah, know, right? yeah. German yeah. Yeah, from yeah. you know Opel, yeah. yeah. From Opel. He came to us because the owner of DeLorean is like, oh guys I have a problem because uh, I get old and uh, yeah. but I want I still want to drive my DeLorean. Can you put in an electric power steering? So, good idea. So, well, I'm engineer by Opel. I gave you from an Opel power steering say what you want, you get it from me. And he gave us um, uh, the electronic control unit, he gave us um, the cables, he gave us steering columns and so on. And so we adapt this in his DeLorean. And it works very well. He's very happy. Until now, it works perfect. Well, and um, uh, one, two years later, we sell a DeLorean automatic transmission to a lady in Germany and he, she only has one arm. She uh, left her left arm on a, a motorcycle accident yeah so she only one arm and uh, but she lost the DeLorean and she bought the DeLorean and she said ah, I, I, I can do this but I say hey you can do this now but in two or five years you cannot do this yeah because it's not so easy to steer this right. car without a power steering well and she said ah, okay good idea let's let's make something and so then we search for a company say make power steerings for cars they make this for old Mercedes-Benz right. from the 50s this, yeah, for and this uh, is Ferraris. in Europe. This is in Europe, yeah. Okay. And we developed this for the DeLorean. Yeah. Um, we sent them the parts from the steering and right. say put some um, some dummies on it. We put it in and say okay, this must move and something. And so we sent this part three, four times from them to us. Right. And then at the end of the day, we have a power steering system. And now you, so, you so can you, buy this. You take the rack out, the stock rack. Mm -hmm. And then you bolt in this power rack. Yes. There comes a speed sensor with the system when you okay. buy the system. But we don't use this. We have a switch, a separate okay. switch for switch it off, but we switched it off the last 20,000 kilometers. How often? Never. Never. <laughs> Never. You just drive with it on. Yeah. You, yeah. you learn the feel. Um, yeah. This is not a big difference. It's so what big. is what is this cost? Um, I think it's around the, the parts around two and a half thousand dollars. Twelve volt. You get a complete column. Column. You put your one out and you get a, a new one. You put out the steering wheel and the switches. Okay. And then you put out the complete column. Okay. And if you put out the column, you only have this this double pipe. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And okay. you lay this in your garage and you take the new one. It looks the same, but with this. Motor, right, right? The okay. motor on it, okay. and you have connector, and you have a, um, a small um, electronic control unit, right. and you have all the wirings, and that's it. Yeah. And then at the end, you put on okay. So if you use the use yeah. your original parts. Everything but is the, the same. The internal shaft is all uh, changes out. Yeah. 
The only thing you cannot do after this modification, right. you cannot adjust your steering wheel in this direction. You only can adjust it in this direction, okay. up and down. Right. But the original cars, you can adjust it right. in, yeah. Yeah. in two, four two directions. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Yeah. But okay. then you only can adjust up and down. And there are so many DeLorean drivers who drive their car 30 years and they have no idea yes, about I know. adjusting yeah, the steering wheel. Yeah. Yeah. It don't takes the power from the DeLorean electric system, it takes the power, power directly from the battery with a fuse. Only this little power from the ignition switch right. for activating the system right. or deactivating the system. It closes the relay, so... Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, okay. though, that's a, a, a complete separate system. Sure. Yeah. It don't charge the normal right. electric on the car because um, you cannot put this, I don't know, 70, 80 amps uh, right. around uh, through the original wiring. Right. Yeah, yeah. Here you see the auxiliary fuel tank. This, in this auxiliary fuel tank are 125 liters. And we don't have only this separate tank, we have two complete separate fuel systems. Yeah, here you see, here. Yeah. we have here the yeah. pre-filter, the fuel pump, the regular filter. This is the same parts like This is, like this the, is the accumulator. No, that's the filter that's, and that's the accumulator. Oh, oh that's okay, the accumulator. Yeah, there's yeah. Your okay, yeah. there's your okay. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the, the original system is on the normal place, on the original place, with pump and everything. Right. Yeah. And so we can change between the systems. If we get in trouble with a pump or yes. we had bad fuel or something, yep. yeah, we don't have to fix anything now at the moment. We only have to switch the electric from the, to the pumps. Yeah, that's only the earth. Yeah, you can switch, uh, switch inside and yep. here, this. Right, those valves. Okay. That's, and that's yeah, it. Okay. Yeah, and now we work yeah. on the other right. tank. Right. That's all. That's very easy. So we can go around 900 miles with wow. both tanks. Yeah, the long distance. But normally, well, we go around five. Yeah. 600, and 500, with, 600 but we only work with this normally uh, the other in the other tank there is some german uh, uh, petrol yeah german petrol is <laughs> german. also still in the tank yeah, yeah. yeah. still in the, in the other tank there are some more modifications because it's not enough to put in a fuel tank well this fuel tank is not only this what you see it goes into the spare wheel compartment they are down okay, right. so we use every space we have well, the second thing is now we don't have enough space for two of these, so we have only one gas strut. Yeah. Open it, yeah. And we have this lock. These are all these small little things nobody sees from outside, but this takes a lot of time, yeah, to, to figure out to how figure to do out it. all this. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's kinda that's kinda And here yeah. in front of this we have Spare parts in right. it. We filled this up with spare parts completely. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, um, like long, long tubes, and in these tubes yeah. are parts. They are uh, in say welded in in a, in a plastic. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That you know, water can come on this part right. and so on. And we have this in long tubes, so we can put Pull this out. Off. And those yep. wheel bearings, ball joints, yeah. fuel pumps, sure. uh, and so on and so on. And so everything is here in front. All three cars are filled up in here. Okay. And here are the informations. Yeah. What's um, in there? Spark cable, V belts, um, oh, um, okay. fuel tube, starter, uh, ignition coil, um, wiper yep. blades, yep. the um, fuel pump, um, ball joints, and so on and so on and so on. Yeah. So when we need something, yeah. we only have to look. Oh, where is it? Okay, let's put it out. Yeah. We, have, we can change it. That's it. Yeah. Like in racing cars, there's foam inside. Yeah. That the fuel is a little bit quieter while driving. You see this? Well, first, outside you see, um, this is a pre-air filter. Yeah, it's a cyclone pre-air filter. So you have here inside this system and the, the, the engine um, pull in the air and bring it in a rotation with this, yeah? And all the hard parts, sand, bugs, flies and so on, are then collected Spawn out. Yes. here. In this one, yeah. yeah. And so in the evening, well, we made this after Monument Valley, yeah. Right. So you see, the engine is very full of dust, and sure. we, we we clean this, we wash it out, and then we replace it. And that's it. Inside, we use the normal paper filter like you have in your DeLorean. Right. No, no, nothing different, yeah. Right. Nothing. Um, there are some key key end or something. No, we we use an absolute normal paper filter. Okay. But we protect the paper filter. Yeah with this one because the sand 
don't come into the paper filter. Right. Because sand in this high speed uh -huh. destroy the paper filter. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Makes holes in it and then you get in trouble with sand in the engine and yeah. nobody likes That's sand right. inside of the That's engine. Right. Yeah. That's it. Well, and here these two scoops are only that the hot air can come out. That's it. Yeah. Um, some people ask me about the back to the future thing. This is no back to the future thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, here inside, um, the engine is absolute stock. Um, the three engine from the three engines, engine from Claus and the force car from, from, from Sven, they are 100% stock, original camshafts and so on, yeah. Right. Um, well, they are just well maintenanced and regular all changed in, within the last 35 years, but that's it. Synthetic? Synthetic. Yeah. Synthetic. Yeah. Synthetic. Okay. Five uh, W30 um, Ford we use. We okay. have the best experience with this oil and it's not so expensive. Yeah. Well, you can pay so many money for oil, sure. but yeah. I think this engine don't need more. Right. Yeah, this is for us the perfect oil. I like this, but this is a philosophy. Yeah, I, I knew a lot of people, you can spend hours and hours and hours to talk about engine author the glory. Yeah. And we tried this and the last 25,000 kilometers or at his car around 40,000 kilometers because he run the other tours over right. his car, it works perfect. So yeah. I can say, yes, this oil is okay for the glory. That's all. We want to go around the world and if right. you make some tuning things, you can do this. Yeah, right. if you go only here around the corner. Sure. But if you want to make a trip like this, yeah, and you stand anywhere middle of India and yeah. have a problem with your rockers and your fucking tuning parts, right. you don't really like this situation, I'm right. sure. Yeah, that's the reason why we only use stock. Okay. And the stock engine, if it's well maintained and well adjusted and everything around works perfect, it's 100% wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Yep. for this thing, you don't need more. If you like, ah, I want to love it. I want to have more power. You put in a V8 engine, it's okay, it's your car, you can do what you want. Yeah. Right. But when you want to make a tour around the world, I think you will think about taking the original part. Oh, yeah, yeah? absolutely. Isn't it? absolutely. That's, it. That's all, yeah? yeah, that's all. Well, um, engine, you see some little modifications. Well, here, this is uh, the part from the cruise control. Uh, you see, we don't have any heat muffler shield. and right. heat shield. Why? Look inside. There is no heat, so we don't need a heat shield. Yeah. Right. Um, we have a, um, um, a different exhaust system. Oh, of course, no, we don't have an exhaust. We have two exhaust systems, one right, one left. Right. Yeah, two different systems because the original system makes this coat from hot pipes around the engine. The yes. And the I, pipe, I think right. this is not very clever right. Yeah, because yeah, you have all this hot yep. air, right. this temperature inside of your engine's compartment. And though in this way, we go out directly Yeah, and we don't have this temperature inside of the engine. And so we don't need this heat shield, yeah? We don't get in trouble with the V-belts. Normally we don't get in trouble right. with, the, with the bearings and, 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 and with the ceilings. Now you the had custom so mufflers made? Yes, from a specialist in Germany, he made this for us. The muffler and the manifold, this is one part, and this okay. is custom made. The so it's, it's a direct system. system. It's a wow. direct system. The headers, wow. the muffler and out. Right, wow. okay. Yeah. The thing okay. around the engine. Oh, well, and this is not made from a lot of small parts right. and value. No, no, this is only one pipe. Right. Very, okay. very, very nice. Well, and you see this... Um, fuel injection the fuel lines. Fuel injection lines, yeah. yeah. Well, because with the, at first, uh, the, the first two tours we made with the original line, with the, right. the, um, but we are not happy with them. Okay. We always get in trouble, yeah. Because if they leak just a little, little bit, you don't see this, yeah. Yes. You only can smell this with a special right. sensor, yeah. but you don't yeah. see it and you always get in trouble. A company in Germany, they, we, we, we buy some tubes and pipes and right. poly things from them. And I talk to them like, hey guys, I have a problem. We have to fix this because yes. I have this and this is rubbish for okay. that what I do. Yeah. And so they look in, in, the, in the stock and say, ah, come on, let's try this. And so that's it, yeah. Okay. So we'll try this, yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's a German brand and it works wonderful. Is that an easy Beautiful. changeover? An hour, okay, it's an easy changeover. But at the end, it's a lot cheaper than the original ones, yeah? yeah. Well, but uh, some guys like the original look, so they don't like this, but um, in, in this case, in this cause, we that's the problem when I go around the world, is how many trouble. Yeah, right. Right. yeah and for so, well, um, Reliability. Reliability, thank yeah. you. Yeah. This is but really good. effect, this effect. Yeah. This effect, yeah. but, well, this effect, but um, we can change this too, yeah, yeah, but we, ne we never get in trouble with this, we only get in trouble with, with that, those, yeah, right. that's it. Yeah, right. This is a um, 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 uh, tool, yeah, when we want to check the um, pressures, yeah, and you only have to make this. That's all, yeah, here, right? That's all, nice. very, very thick yeah. outside, yeah, yeah. Right. and yeah. you cannot 
uh, get in trouble with them. Yeah. Right, well, there are the there are different. There are a thinner and, and and thicker. And but I take the thickest one because right. so we never get in trouble. Sure. Yeah, we have some. Um, That's so cool. Yeah. You see these yellow and purple parts? The yellow and purple. Yeah. This suspension system is. Um, Custom built only for the DeLorean World Tour cars from Key and, 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 and W, but we offer a Key and W suspension um, for the normal street DeLoreans with a German paper because in Germany it's very important to have some papers with stamps on it, you know. Best, the best suspension you can have in your DeLorean, I say, 100%, because you don't have this banana spring again, right. yeah? you have a straight spring. And you know this, you're an engineer. Oh yeah, um, I know. Um, a cord spring, don't like this. A cord spring always want to be in a press, in line. We offer this for normal DeLoreans, right. but then it's not purple and yellow. Then it's um, only stainless steel, The the... The, the body, yeah, right. and the springs are black, and the rest is grey. Because in Germany, we are they are very strictly with the historical um, uh, license, you know. Yes. So we don't sell this in yellow, purple. Yeah, we on, we only offer this in this silver, black, and grey. So it looks it don't looks like like carnival. Right. Yeah, this looks a little like carnival, <laughs> but this is typical King W. Oh, yeah. the, the, the normal system for the road, and it's definitely 100% better. It's around 1,000 euro added tax. When you need, you can raise up, you can go down because they are adjustable. Yeah. Why we want to use steel rims? Well, it's easy because steel rims are easier to fix than alumin aluminum. 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 Aluminum, thank you. Right. Steel rims are easier to fix than aluminum wheels because if you are in the desert and have a problem with a wheel, you can take a hammer or something else and you can fix this wheel. Yeah. The second is it will not break down like an aluminum wheel. The third is we want to have the same wheel front and rear because so we only need one spare. 16 front and rear. Okay. Well, why 16? That's easy too because uh, we uh, use run flat tires and you don't find um, run for tires in a smaller size that begin at 16. Well, of course, there are one or two 15, but it's very difficult to get them in Germany and it's yeah. very, very difficult difficult to get them in the rest of the world. But this is a very popular tire size, yeah, okay. because this tire is used on a BMW 1, on some Volkswagens, Audis, and so on. And so, wherever you are, you can find these tires. We was in, um, in Singapore, I think, Singapore, yeah, Singapore, and we need two tires, yeah. And uh, we go. Do, 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 we call the tire shop. Uh, we need this tire. Oh, okay, we have it in stock. Conti, cool. yeah, we have it in stock. Runflat, yeah, no problem. We have it in stock. It's a normal size. That's very important. If you go around the world, oh, they yeah. use parts. They're available wherever you are. Yeah. Well, that's a story about 16 inch and steel. We have here the Runflat tires, and so we have a tire pressure monitoring system inside with sensors in the tires and a monitor inside of the car because if you lose pressure you don't feel it when you drive yeah, yeah. that's the sense of the run flat tire but you have to be informed about this like hey hello you have a problem you get in trouble and yeah. if the tire pressure is getting lesser than um, a program point then it makes a noise not only make a make a make a sign and make a noise that's important because if you drive you don't watch always this monitor, yeah? Um, you cannot buy them on the regular way. So we talked to a company, they built these wheels in the past and asked them and they said, mm, okay, we don't have any stock, but we can build them for you. And though so they built these wheels for us. So we can use this 4100 thing and have the 16 inch steel wheel. You see this line? This yeah. is straight down. If you watch this in your DeLorean, just make this. Okay, the tire's it's, further inbound. Yeah, if you put this one, it goes like this. Yeah. Here the fender goes like this. Yeah. And our fender goes straight down. Oh, oh so you move the fender around. Yeah, the fender Oh, around. okay, So That's we have space enough for the tire. Yeah. And the second reason for moving the fender is the thing behind this three... Your trans cooler. Inside is... Um, uh, transmission all cooler with a fan on it and um, a fuel cooler because um, the, the benzene, the fuel comes from the engine's compartment back very hot and we cool it down and bring it then back to the gas fuel, tank. to the gas tank. Yeah, so oh. we have always low temperature on the gas tank. Yeah, because yeah. too high temperatures this is, can be a problem. 
This is against stones, that's all, yeah? Because we, um, you know this DeLorean, we have the absolute straight um, a glass, yeah? And if a stone comes, you get in trouble. Yeah? And we don't have uh, spare headlamps with us. Well, here in America, it's no problem to, to find some new one, yeah? but in the rest of the world, it's a problem. And so um, the streets in, in some countries like India or uh, Myanmar um, or in the, in the eastern Turkey, uh, they had um, uh, some problems with earthquakes and so on. And so you have a lot of stones on the roads. Yeah. yeah. And if you don't get in trouble with a destroyed uh, headlamp, that's the reason why we put this on it. That's all. Because in yeah. Germany, we have this asymmetric light. It means you, you run and the right side is, um, is a little higher yeah. that you see um, footsteppers or, or yeah. cyclists or something. Yeah, they see the, 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 the right side. It's, yeah. it's, it's more light on the right side. But when you go on um, a left lane lands, if you go yeah. in India, um, um, in, in Malaysia, yeah. and so on and so on, you have a problem because you always blend the other guys. Yeah, right. oh, really? yeah. And so you have to to to, to close this section. Nice. Yeah. And we need this again in England. So normally we drive only by day. So yeah. here in the States, it doesn't matter. Yeah. 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 So we leave it on because in England we need it again. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So in your travels so far, what's mm -hmm. the most interesting thing you've seen? The most interesting thing. Wow. That's very. It's not easy to answer because we saw every day so many interesting yeah, yeah. things and we meet so many beautiful people. Um, very impressive was the landscapes in Iran and the people in Iran. But absolutely wonderful. We have a very, very good time in Iran. And it was so impressive because the most people, when I say Iran, they make this. Yeah, yes. They get like, oh, Iran. No. You They're don't. nice people. Nice people yes. and everything. We come in, the officials with the uniforms was nice. Um, the people on the roads and like, everyone was nice to us. Yeah? yeah, And it's really a wonderful, nice land. It's yeah. a nice country. Yeah, That was very impressive. Well, other countries are nice too, but um, all these rumors about this this country, 100% disinformation. Yeah? And I, kept, I only can say to everybody, um, join Iran. Join the people uh, with it, this country. It's really, really wonderful. Well, but there are so many countries. Um, if you drive here on the Lorien and you, you go out of India and you stay in front of a big gate, and on this gate, the letters Nepal, you will not believe this. Come on, you come from Germany, right. you took half around the world, and you, now you stand in front of a gate with Nepal. You're in Nepal with your on the Lorien. Yes. Do you believe this? No, it, uh, it's it's really it's 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 not easy. It's to something this. you you could dream about but never imagine it yeah. becoming reality. The same in Monument Valley. Yes. Yeah. We bought Monument Valley, made a lot of pictures in the evening. I sit in my hotel and Klaus and me together. He makes the the internet blog for our homepage. Yeah, yeah. the pictures and I make this for Facebook and like, hey, no, hey man, that, that cannot be true. Why One thing. Yeah. The for all three. One country with the absolute most amazing streets and landscapes yeah. is Australia. Australia, yes, okay. Australia, yeah. Well, now we are here in America, right. and Arizona is very nice, Utah, very nice. Well, Nevada, we don't see anything about Nevada, only Las Vegas. And right. I think Las Vegas is not Nevada, it's just Las Vegas. It's, it's a big difference between Nevada and Las Vegas, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit different. Yeah. But Utah and Arizona are very nice. But in, in Australia, we have this first time, this impression. and. The Stuart Highway, this is a street from Darwin to Port Augusta. This is okay. exactly straight through the yeah. country. In the middle is Ayers Rock, this big red oh, rock. Oh yeah, yeah, I know Ayers Rock. Uluru, yes. wonderful. And if you go to the street, it's only desert. There's nothing. But That's right. one meter is more interesting than the another. You, this is unbelievable. You must do this, I think. And we met some people in Australia, they say, yes, every guy in Australia has to do one time the Stuart Highway. Yeah, that's like the Muslims, one time they right. have to go to okay. Mecca, right. the, 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 the Christians, one time they life they have to go to Vatican, and right. the DeLorean owners, one time they have to go to Belfast, yeah, right. you know what I mean, yeah? Right. And every Australian, one time, have to go along the Stuart Highway. Highway. It's really wonderful, it's, it's amazing, yeah. 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 There are so many, these special moments, and it's, it's really unbelievable. Unfortunately, it was over all too soon, and the group had to go rest up for the next part of their journey. They had a lot more places to visit in the United States and a lot more things to see. It was great to meet these three adventurers and their custom DeLoreans. Thanks for riding along with us on DeLorean Mac Mini Podcast number eight. See you next time.